The following opinions are solely those of Botest.com and its test captain. Hi, Captain Steve for Botest.com, and today we're going to be looking at an offshore center console, the Yellowfin 36 Offshore, powered with three Evernew D-Tech G2 300s. The triple installation of Evernew D-Tech G2s is expected to provide low and mid-range RPM torque and efficiency to this design as an alternative to the many four-stroke engine options, and we want to see how this combination performs. The Yellowfin 36 Offshore has a length overall of 36 feet 8 inches and a beam of 10 feet. With an empty weight of 9,500 pounds, 445 gallons of fuel, and three people on board, she had an estimated test weight of 14,461 pounds. With the Triple Evernerd E-Tech G2300s on our test boat turning 15 by 22 RX4 props, we reached the top speed of 60 miles an hour at 5850 RPM. Best economic cruise came in at 3,500 RPM and 31.5 knots. It was at that speed that the 25.4 gallon per hour total fuel burn translated into 1.2 miles per gallon and a range of 533 miles. All while still holding back a 10% reserve of the boat's 477 gallon total fuel capacity. Acceleration from a standing start to plane averaged 4 seconds. She went from 0 to 20 miles per hour in 5.9 seconds and under 30 miles per hour in 7.7 .7 seconds. Let's start at the stern where the swim platform is treated in sea deck and the clean rigging of the triple Evinrude E-Tech G2300s makes it easy to get around. The starboard reboarding ladder folds under a powder coated tubular platform extension with a grab handle. The sea deck means sure footing and fish measuring over the width of the swim platform with a pair of rod holders affixed to the transom. Passing through the 12 inch wide pocket door on the port side of the transom we enter the cockpit which measures 8 feet wide by 3 feet 10 inches fore and aft. In each aft quarter are lockers holding power steering booster pumps for the optional Seastar Optimus EPS steering system. Notice the deep channels draining to the aft scuppers where we wouldn't mind seeing a less restrictive plate to allow faster dewatering. Also in this quarter are three hose connections for easy freshwater engine flushing, all well labeled. On center line in the transom, among the vertical rod holders is a live well painted light blue inside with a 3 quarter inch thick acrylic lid with a lift and lock latch, tension hinges, and a gasket enclosure to allow it to be pressurized and prevent bait from sloshing. In the sole of the cockpit are three hatches. The port and starboard are lockers with gasketed lids finished on both sides equipped with lift and lock latches and tension hinges. The center locker has gas assist struts to hold it open and is a mechanical space as well as stowage with access to fuel filters for the outboards, through hulls feeding raw waters to the live wells. Also visible are the tops of the fish finder transducers tucked beneath the lipped shelf. The bulwark's depth in the cockpit is 25 inches and there are under gunnel racks for three rods per side with padding to protect the reels. The aft facing seat on the leaning post conceals a live well accessible beneath the starboard cushion. Cap rails around the cockpit are 12 inches wide and finished in non-skid. There are eight rod holders per side along the length of each side with three of them doing double duty as beverage holders. And combing pads line the interior with the exception of the aft port quarter all the way to the bow and back. At the bow a recessed bow rail is set inboard in the cap rail which is 34 inches off the deck. Cap rails forward are 16 inches wide and finished in non-skid. A pop-up bow navigation light and a pair of 8 inch pull-up mooring cleats are placed close together. At the bow beneath a hatch with a lift and lock latch and tension hinges is a four deck locker. Notice the cutout for an anchor line. Concealed in here are the windlass and through the stem anchor pulpit, plus a lower door that grants better access to the chain locker below. In the bulwarks, a stowage bin with a lipped edge is on either side. In the sole, there are three lockers, one forward and two aft to either side. All have RTM hatch lids that are finished on both sides, use lift and lock latches and tension hinges. At the center of the forward deck is a self-draining coffin box equipped with a gas assist stainless strut, a stainless piano hinge and a cushioned lid. Alongside are fold down racks to hold dive tanks or fenders and a freshwater wash down bib is to one side and a raw water to the other. The forward facing seat on the console is flanked by rod holders, two of which double as beverage holders. The seat lifts to reveal a large locker that can also serve as a head compartment. Inside there's 4 feet 2 inches of headroom, a dome light and access to the back of the helm panel. The door is held open by two gas assist struts and has a gasket to keep the space dry. Above, a large LED light bar is mounted to the forward edge of the hardtop, along with an optional forward-looking infrared thermal imaging system. 
The walkways next to the leaning post and console are 18 inches and 19 inches respectively. Flip out storage bins are amidships to either side. Studs on the console side accept an Isinglass enclosure that hangs from a channel on the hardtop above. Mounting points for outriggers are to either side and a grab rail helps ensure crew comfort in rough conditions. The robust tubular hardtop frame is welded of two and a quarter inch thick diameter tubes finished in Line-X protective coating. Integrated grab handles and five rocket launcher style rod holders are welded to the frame aft. The helm has a steering wheel offset to the port side and a compass on the center line. The upper helm panel has a pair of 15.6 inch Raymarine Axiom XL touchscreen displays. The stainless wheel is on a tilt base and has a steering knob. The lower dash panel has windlass control support and then a Fusion stereo control head, engine tilt trim controls, the Evernude Icon Touch 7 inch color touchscreen helm display and Evernude Icon 2 Premium EST engine shift and throttle binnacle. The Raymarine Autopilot Control Head and Trim Tab Controls and a VH mic are mounted to the right side. A pair of USB ports for device charging are on the starboard end of the dash. The Evernude Icon Touch controls all the engine features and functions, including engine information like RPM and fuel flow monitoring, water temperature and boat speed. It also provides precise readouts of fuel and oil levels and control of the iSteer and iTrim automated system controls. The Icon 2 Premium EST Binnacle provides LED indicators showing neutral forward and reverse, trim and tilt control, engine syncing, an RPM up or down key to allow 50 RPM jumps in engine speed at the touch of a button, all in an ergonomic electronic control package. The helm seat has a pair of flip-up bolsters integrated into the cushions and three flip-up armrests that get out of the way if the captain has to help out when the bite heats up. The bolsters have a hip-grabbing contour that offshore aficionados will appreciate. Beneath the seat is a locker where the batteries are mounted. On the console is an angled footrest finished in C-Deck, though we found the design a little tricky to find a comfortable position. The Elephant 36 Offshore has an upper helm position with a power actuated seat, a climb up through the sunroof and the captain is in position standing atop the console which is finished in C-Deck. The helm has a 9 inch Raymarine Axiom display, windlass control, trim tabs, engine control, engine start-stop, engine trim, a tilt base for the steering wheel with knob and a VHF. The seat offers a perch with a rail to serve as a footrest and the power seat moves fore and aft. That's our full features inspection of the Elephant 36 Offshore rigged with triple 300 horsepower Evernood E-Tech G2s. These outboards introduce numerous features as well as two-stroke performance for a boat built for rugged blue water work. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.